Meet two early years advisors with a passion and a purpose to take the learning to the children and to make every day a fun day. Get his handkerchief out and go. I'm Sheila Sage. I'm primary inspector with early years responsibility in Worcestershire. And my job is to help, support, challenge and moderate, I think. I started off with adult young offenders and uh, realised every year I, I went back that I needed younger and younger children because that's where it, that's where it is, really. That's it. So you're going to sit here. I'm Sue Durant, teacher advisor for early years. I have quite a large role in that I support schools, but also I'm part of the mentor teacher team. I started teaching in the 70s, um, really found that I loved early years. Uh, I was really lucky in that I had Sheila as my inspector. And we formed a kind of bond, I think, right from the start. We were on the same wavelength. Giving children time, space and responsibility is not easy because in some ways it's taking the um, onus away from the member of staff and giving it to the children. The way that you set up your setting is, has to be quite structured and that the children really have to know the routines because without those routines, they, it, it would just be lots of children wandering around the classroom not knowing what everything is. Sue and Sheila visit many early year settings to work closely with the staff. One such setting is St John's First School in Kidderminster. Here, from the moment they arrive, the children take responsibility for their learning by sharing in the daily routines. I think when children first come into a new setting, um, practitioners need to, be, to know that they can spend quite a long time in, in talking to the children about th very simple things like how do we go and hang up our coat? How do we know that this is yours? Where are we going to put your picture if you want to take it home? All those really s simple things sometimes are kind of rushed at the beginning of their time in their, in their new setting. And if children don't sort of cotton on to that, and, and, and then they're not able to do those things for themselves. The children have chosen different coloured pictures to go beside their names to enable them to identify their own coat peg. The same picture is also on each child's drawer. It's important to encourage self-registration, for instance, for children. Um, and there are many ways of doing this. One way it is for children to have something in their tray. They can go straight to their tray in the morning, for instance, a teddy, and they can hang it perhaps in a designated space in their area. And, and then afterwards, they can count and see how many people are here. It's amazing. They pick it up within about three days. If they can't recognise their name, they've still got a different. They've all got different coloured teddies. If you noticed, yeah. Some days we go one step further, and they actually take the teddies off and count them. And then another child will go around the room, touching the heads of children, and we see if the two numbers tally. Then we find the number on the hundred square. So you can go one step further with it. Rebecca. Oops. It doesn't have to be teddies. There are many ways that children can have their self-registration um, routines. Uh, a really good way that I like is when children come and actually write their name on a large sheet of paper. Um, and, and many settings now really enjoy having that because it means that the children at the beginning of the year might just do a cross, a line or any mark which, which they say is their name later on in the year, they're able to write their name and that gives them a huge sense of achievement. Or they could use ping pong balls in a jar. Or they could use ping pong balls. And there is another good one, isn't there, where they, can, they find their name, which is laid out on a table, and they pick it up and put it into a box. Right, now we'll do the one that Mrs Moore had ever such a job to learn to do. Well to get the blood flowing, well the children start the day with Brain Gym, a lively way of getting the children's brains working and improving their hand and eye coordination. 
So how do the morning activities begin? The children will often know what they want to work with and what they need and so you need to give them that chance to be able to go and get the things out for themselves and don't put lots of things out for them so they can go and find their own things. We need dice. We need to play that game up. Oh, there's the dice. We think that um, where there's a high degree of self-chosen activity, that's when children are most engaged. And that's very difficult for practitioners because they feel they want to teach. That's what they're there for. They're there to be able to teach the children. But it's where there's self-chosen activity, where children are really involved in what they're doing, that's when the learning is richer. And that's when we want to encourage that in our settings, don't we? We like to feel it that we give the children an opportunity to be themselves. I think education has had such a, a, an effect on practitioners trying to make them fit into a mould. Yeah. And I don't think that's been healthy for children. And so what we're trying to do is to give children time, space to be themselves and to play because they don't learn things second hand from what people tell them. They learn from experience, first hand experiences, don't they, Sue? Mm, they do. Six. Got six. That's it. That's it. Yeah. The daily routine of getting milk is another way that children can be given the space to develop their independence. Giving that um, ownership to the children is quite difficult. Mm. That's where I think some um, practitioners feel guilty because they'll go home at night and think, what did I do? How have I done that for that child? But the skill is letting the child do it for themselves. And what we're saying is that children, we'd like to see children knowing if they want to play with the bricks, if they want to play in the role play area, that they can that they, they know have where the things are. Them. Yes. Hold her head. Why have we got to hold her head? She doesn't bang her head. And what else? What would happen if she fell into the water? Get water in her mouth. She would get water in her mouth. We'll put some more in. Don't hear any more in. Put some more in. People don't want children to fail, so they give them too much information. They support them too much, so that children lose that ability to struggle. And what we want is, is children, good to struggle. <laughs> children to be able to struggle with ideas because that's the time they think, that's the time they work out solutions and that's the time they feel they've got a, a sense of achievement when they've finished it. It's important to give children time and space. Very often when children are asked something, they're given a very short time to answer. And if they haven't been able to answer, you say it again in a different way. It gives children uh, no mental space to be able to think. So they need time to think. We don't need to have the classroom absolutely full of desks. They need space to sometimes work on the floor, sometimes work on a tabletop, sometimes get something out and, and plan it because it's the time to plan their activity. Sometimes children shouldn't be given the activity, they should have time to plan it for themselves. At St John's, the children are encouraged to be independent in the daily routine of visiting the toilet by using toilet teddies, either boy teddy Billy or girl teddy Millie. The toilet teddies are a really good idea so that the teacher knows that there is somebody already out. The children know that there's somebody who's already gone to the So they don't have toilet. to ask the teacher? They don't have to ask, it's independent. They can take mm. the teddy and go Great and sit idea. him outside the toilet. Mm. 
We're going to do secret box now. Mm. Ben, could you carefully, because there might be something in there that breaks. I think it's really important that children have this emotional involvement with their learning. Is it really, really special? Can you give them a clue? It's inside a pot and it's little. It's inside a pot and it's little. Anticipation oh. is one of those emotions that I think is, uh, is one of those feelings that's really important. And if something is in the anticipation box where children can imagine all day what is going to be there at the end of the day, maybe they've put it in. You're itching to tell them, aren't you? Could we just get the And they love that word, anticipation, Anticipation, don't they? they love yeah. that long word. And they can imagine all day what it is. And then at the end of the day, all is revealed. Oh, isn't that pretty? So this was your mum's, was it? We have to be very careful. Whoever you choose to look after that till home time. George. Oh, that's nice. George, hold it. Can he have the pot with it, Kira? Just in case he drops and it. And the lid. Because we don't want to lose it. And the lid. I think that's really important to keep children imagining all the time. So who's what put something in the anticipation box? Well, then? sometimes it's an adult, isn't it? And sometimes one of the children puts right. something in the so anticipation box. Anybody can put something in the anticipation box. Oh, yes, I think that's lovely. And yeah. I've seen it in some classrooms where it's a basket yeah. and it's up on a pulley yeah. and it actually disappears into the ceiling. And the children will have countdown to how many minutes it is until the anticipation basket comes down, and then they can and see what it is, and they're it. guessing all the time what's what in a it. Great idea, yeah. And it's lovely for the children to actually put something in there, isn't it? Because to keep a secret all day, to keep a secret all day, knowing that something's in that box, something most adults can't do. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I think we do expect too much of practitioners sometimes because we have um, given them the lead that they've got to be uh, prepared for everything, they've got to be planned. Mm. And now what we're saying to them, stand back sometimes yeah, that's true. and listen to the children. Mm. And I, I don't know that we have um, given them sufficient basis to be able to do mm. that. I mean, that's what we keep trying to do, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And we talk a lot about, you must stand back and observe your children and make little notes and, and then yes. go back later and put it into your planning. And we don't, probably don't do enough about how to do this practically. Children need to know that if they were building in the blocks or building something, um, that, and they had to stop it, then that, that it would still be there for them tomorrow. That things are in the same place and that they have that, that wherewithal to be able to go back and do it. So it's giving them time to go back and refine. I think if there's one piece of advice I'd give to practitioners, it's plan half of what you've been doing and give children twice as much time to do it. I think we're driven all the time and they've got to have fun.